so I'll give you an overview of what indices actually are. Okay? Um, another word for indices, by the way, powers, okay, you might have heard that. Uh, sometimes called exponents as well. Has anybody heard has anybody heard any other words to do with indices? No? Okay. Uh, there are others, okay, but these are the, by far the three most common ones, right? Now if I give you something like this, if I give you three plus three plus three plus three, okay, are you happy that this is just repeated addition? Okay? So is there a quicker way that we can write this? Four times three. Exactly. I've got three, and I'm doing it four times. Okay? I'm doing it four times. Okay. So in a similar kind of way, is there an abbreviation or a shortcut for this? So three times three times three times three. Go on, Megan. Can you type in the power of four? Ah, good. So you'd say there's three, because that's the number which I'm multiplying, and I'm doing it four times. So I'm multiplying it together four times. Okay? So are you happy of the difference between this and this? Okay? It's the one thing which everybody gets confused with when they're dealing with indices. Okay? Three times four means three added to itself four times. Three to the power of four means three multiplied by itself four times. Okay? Um, so let's, let's work with this. What is 3 to the power of 4? Either stick in your calculator or somebody might be able to tell me. What is 3 to the power of 4? 81. 81, perfect. Okay. So, we can give each one of these numbers a name. Right? Uh, this thing over here, well this is just really a number. Okay? It's what it's equal to. So there's nothing really that interesting about what happens over here on the right hand side. Okay? What would we call this thing up here? What would you call the 4? The index, good. Notice that index is the singular of indices. Okay, so indices means more than one, index means just one. Okay. Any other ideas? What else would we call it? Power. Power, that works as well. Or, like I said before, the exponent, good. Okay. Now, what would we call this 3? What would we call the number down here? Any ideas? You get to the B? Base. Base, good. Okay, so three is the thing which we're multiplying together. We call that the base. Okay, that's the thing which we start with, the three down here. Okay? Now, my question is, and I'll write this down in words, how would we say this? How would we say this in words? Would you say base three? You could. I would say this as 3 to the power of 4 is equal to, is that okay? Okay, so that's how we say that. Now, we kind of discussed this before when we were looking at thirds, but if I wrote this down, how would I say this? Good, so 3 squared. So, here I could say 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 9, okay? Um, but we tend to give this a special name, 3 squared. Can anybody remember why? Why do we say squared here and to the power of 4 here? Because it's the area of the square. Absolutely right. This is actually looking at something geometric. It's looking at a square, namely the area. And what's the side length of that square? 3, okay? So when we're squaring something, we're looking at the area, which is why we say squared, and not to the power of 2. Is that okay? Uh, whereas this, in general, we would say 3 to the power of 4 equals 81. Okay? All right, fine. <coughs> well, we can actually do a few shortcuts here. Okay? So you'll often hear the words or the phrase laws of indices being thrown around. And that's actually what we're going to be looking at today. Um, I don't want you to think of them as laws in the sense that you have to obey them. Okay, uh, laws of indices. I don't want you to think of them as laws in the sense that you have to obey them, otherwise everything will break. I want you to think of them instead as a shortcut. Okay, a quicker way of getting to the answer without having to think about it logically all the time. Okay, um, and there are. Eight of them, I think, or they, though I think the last one we break into two. So, let's have a look. 
The first one is very, very simple. Let's call this one law one. All right. Okay. Um, let's suppose I have this. Three cubed times by three to the power four. Three cubed times by three to the power four. Don't tell me what this is equal to. Tell me how I would work through this logically. So what does three cubed actually mean? If I was going to write it out long hand. Uh, exactly. So that there would be three times three times three. Three multiplied by itself three times. Okay. What would this three to the power of four be? If I was going to write it out in long hand. Okay, three multiplied by itself four times. So how many times am I multiplying three by itself? So seven. Yeah, and you're happy, why? Because you start off with three threes over here, so there's three of them over here, and then there's four of them over here. So together there are three plus four or seven. Okay? So the shortcut, which we can say then, is that if we want to deal with something like this, so we have the same base, they're both threes, and we want to multiply them together, would you be happy that we just take powers and what do we do to them? We add them, or we sum them. Yeah? Can you see why? Because we have three here, we have four here, together we've got seven. Is that okay? So if I was going to generalize this, if I take some base, let's call it A, and I raise it to the power of N. That's a bit like saying 3 to the power of 3. Okay? And then if I take the same base, A, and I raise it to a different power, let's say M, it could be the same, but let's say it's different. So let's say 4. What would this be equal to? Excellent. This is literally saying we end up with the same base and I just add those powers together. Is that okay? Good. Excellent. Um, all right, let's have a look at the second law then. Very, very similar. So this works if we multiply them. What happens if we divide them? So let's try 3 to the power of 4 divided by 3 to the power of 3. Okay, so you can kind of see that it's just a parallel to this. Here when we were multiplying, we added. So here when we're dividing, we should subtract. And you are right. But can you convince me why? Uh, Four three uh, and okay. then divide by uh, three three. Okay, so I'll write that out then. So just like I did up here, mm -hmm. I know three to the power four means three multiplied by itself yeah. four and times. Divided yeah. by three three. Exactly. Now I'm going to write my divide as a fraction. Yeah. Okay. And I have three of them there. So three multiplied by three multiplied by three. And then two sides. So exactly. So three of the threes are basically cancelled. They're removed. Okay. So in other words, I just left with. I started with 4, take away 3, I'm left with just the 1. Is that alright? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you here, I'm not just going to jump straight to the law. Actually, I should generalise this. So if I take a to the power of n, and I divide it by a to the power of m, what should that be equal to? A, n, minus Spot on. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you is most people would just jump straight to the law. And they're not that difficult. Like Most of you could probably see why this makes sense. Okay. But my question is, what if you forget the law? Like, What if you're not sure of the law? then you can kind of always go back to this thought process as well. Is that okay?